The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too, go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too, go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. <coughs> God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. That's a traditional call and response in the African-American tradition. My friend, Father Tom Cardone, the chaplain at Kellenberg High School, often uses that as uh, introductions to multiple homilies. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. But it's also, I think, a good summary of today's Liturgy of the Word. But based on the story we just heard, maybe the question is, is God too good? Is God too good? Isaiah will complicate things a bit, and Jesus will use his parable to remind us that God's goodness never fits our molds. God is good. God is good, and it says more than we might expect. So Isaiah's three-verse selection in the first reading gives us a little conundrum. First, he tells us, seek the Lord while he may be found. And he suggests that we can do that by asking for mercy, forsaking our ways, our scoundrel ways, and abandoning wicked thoughts. Then... Just when we think we might be reaching our goal, God says, As high as the heavens are above, so high are my thoughts, my thinking, above your thinking. And that's a perfect transition into the parable that we hear today. This might be the most un-American of all 
Jesus' parables, of all Jesus' speeches. We can pretty easily admire the story about the forgiving father who takes back his reckless prodigal son. And maybe we can even revel in the critique of church and state leaders in the story of the Good Samaritan who bypassed the poor person on the road from Jericho to Jerusalem. But this story of equal pay for vastly unequal work just doesn't sit right. Like a teacher who gives everyone an A, the vineyard owner in this story sort of trashes his hardest workers, workers so badly that they may never accept a job from him again, at least not during the morning hours. So there are many ways of looking at this story, and I think two ways to evaluate the economic justice, the situation of this narrative. From one vantage point, the workers who spend all day in the sun have a very legitimate and solid point. They have labored longer than other groups. So if justice flows from time and from efforts spent, they should have gotten more than those who came later. Any kid could tell you, it's only fair. An alternative view might be to look at the question through the prism of need. Jesus never explains why the workers weren't hired, or they, they all weren't hired at the same time. Not explained. Perhaps the owner thought that a small group could get everything done, but then he keeps revising his plan throughout the day, and he hires people five times, in the early morning to five o'clock in the afternoon. Maybe the latecomers had sought work at various job sites, moving desperately from one to the next place, and finally they were hired at five o'clock in the afternoon. All we know is that the owner brought in workers at different hours and promised to pay them a just wage. That's it. But whether they came early or late, each one needed the daily wage to live, to survive. Their need to eat, their need to support their family was the same, and the vineyard owner seemed more interested in supplying their need than in measuring their contribution to his task, to the job that he gave them. In this case, justice was based not on energy expended, but on each one's right to life, each one's right to a, dis to a decent wage. A third way of understanding this parable begins by interpreting it in relation to the context in Matthew's Gospel. It's very interesting that this is only in Matthew's Gospel, and so that means we only hear it on a Sunday once every three years. Maybe it's a good thing we only hear it because it's too disturbing. So this tale in Matthew comes after the story of the rich young man, and also Peter's claim immediately after that that he's given up everything to follow Jesus. And so understood from this angle, the parable has more to do with motives than with wages. And so it focuses on the relationship between the owner and the workers, or in biblical terms, the master and the disciples. It's about mission. It's about mission, not rewards. And so this perspective challenges Christians, all of us, of every age and economic system. The parable speaks about the mercy of God that doesn't negate justice, doesn't negate justice, but elevates it. In the second reading from St. Paul, we hear that he invites us to conduct ourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ, worthy of Jesus. This alone is the way worthy of the gospel. And that is, and we don't like to hear it, to delight 
in the blessings of others and to do as the owner of the vineyard did, completing justice with mercy in dealing with fellow children of God, fellow students, fellow family members, fellow workers, wherever it might be. So this parable is meant to disturb us. It shines light on our lack of love. And it's a good thing, maybe, that it's only heard once every three years because it shocks us even more. Biblical scholars understand this parable as a reference to the Gentiles who received the gospel much later than the Jews, but who were still placed on equal footing with the Jews who were called earlier to be people of God. So God's generous favors to others will never deprive us of what is rightfully ours. Other people may do that. Life itself, the challenges of life, may certainly deprive us of our rights. But if I feel troubled by God's generosity towards others, which at times I certainly do, maybe you do too, I have a long way to go in growing into the image and likeness of God. So today, as we gather together for Mass, let's pray and let's work for generous hearts that's worthy of the gospel of Christ. And let's remember, who was the first canonized saint? Canonized not by the church, but by canonized by Jesus himself. Who was that first saint? The good thief. The good thief, Dismas. He stole paradise at the last minute of life, and this is what God is like. Thank God, thank God, God isn't just there. God is good all the time, and all the time, 